So uh, without further ado, let me introduce our first gentleman uh, via Skype from, uh, from London, England. His name is Dr. Malcolm Carruthers. The name of the book is Testor- Testosterone Resistance. It's published by Ex Libris. You can go to exlibris.com, barnesandnoble.com, and amazon.com. Uh, Dr. Carruthers, uh, welcome from across the pond. It's uh, indeed a pleasure to have you on, sir. Good morning, Stu. It's a pleasure to talk to you. We hear, we hear so much about uh, so many symptoms, uh, so many uh, components that are symptomatic of some certain kind of disease or ailment. Then there are others that kind of disappear in the cracks. We don't hear much about testosterone, its, uh, it, its effects, the rationale behind it. Uh, what's the book about and what are you bringing in print here that, that, uh, that, that should enlighten our listening audience? Well, it's letting people know more about the uh, good factors in relation to testosterone. And uh, uh, there's a double meaning in the title. Firstly, that um, uh, it's a condition like adult onset diabetes, uh, where it's not the level of testosterone so much that counts, but whether the body is sensitive or resistant to it. And secondly, the resistance of the medical profession to actually introducing testosterone treatment, which is uh, quite unaccountable, and uh, sometimes you could all call it almost hormonophobia, fear of testosterone. Uh, d- d- does this mean, doctor, that, that perhaps the way we're treating low testosterone levels by providing uh, some drugs to increase that level is, is not the way to proceed? Well, uh, it's a question of overcoming the resistance. So you don't just throw testosterone at the problem and hope it will go away, but you do a variety of measures, um, sort of lifestyle improvements, which lower the resistance of the body and make the testosterone work better. I want to give the website out for people who, uh, who, and it should be an issue for a lot of people, uh, it's Center for men's health dot c o dot u k and center is spelled c e n t r e yeah the, the u k way of spelling it rather than the american <laughs> <laughs> exactly although we're getting pretty fancy over here with certain terminology like theater t r e but back to the book uh could you go into a little more depth here that, because your new theory compares testosterone deficiency to diabetes you mentioned that but it's, it's, it seems to be eye-opening, and I don't know if, the medical commu- if any of the medical community has focused on this. Well, this is a wake-up call to the medical community to look at uh, testosterone deficiency generally in a different light and to say that um, they're open to uh, the idea of it being resistant, so you don't diagnose it by measuring the level of testosterone in the blood, Um, but you actually listen to the patient and his symptoms and consider conditions that, uh, uh, you know, are affected by testosterone deficiency, and then you treat the patient, you don't treat the laboratory. Is this resistance stopping men from getting the appropriate treatment? And I already suggested that perhaps drugs weren't the solution or the answer to low testosterone levels. It is, yes. Uh, Not so much necessarily in America, uh, where I think patients tend to get what they ask for, but certainly in the UK and Australia, it's a terrible case. Um, It's very difficult to get testosterone treatment. The doctors just measure the level in the blood. If it's above a certain level, they say you can't be deficient of testosterone, whereas the answer is, oh yes, you can. You can be resistant to it. Uh, I'm trying to say this in an acceptable way here, since you're a doctor and I'm a layman. Is this really low T activity rather than low T? And that's what the ads say. Well, that's exactly it. Yes, Stu, it really is. Um, <clears throat> you can have an adequate level of testosterone uh, from the lab tests, but the activity is too low. And so, therefore, you have all the symptoms and problems associated with uh, testosterone deficiency. Even things like um, high blood fat levels, diabetes um, and uh, heart trouble 
and even now uh, Alzheimer's disease is coming to be associated with uh, low T activity. Uh, so wh what, what is your basic recommendation? Uh, and I know that one size does not fit all. You know, it's one of the dangers of doing medical shows on radio, for example. You can't possibly know the profile of the patient, patient or, the, or, the, or the cure or the treatment of it. But uh, is, is, is there, uh, how many different ways are there to, to treat low testosterone? Well, obviously, there are many safe ways of giving it now by skin creams and by injections and so on. Um, but at the same time, you work on the resistance uh, by lifestyle modification, getting the patient to lose a bit of weight, do a bit of exercise, and all this ups their sensitivity to testosterone and can greatly help in the treatment, but it's not often considered. How do you compare the preventative medicine, preventative in terms of uh, uh, blocking or, or stalling or canceling out uh, medical problems with regard to testosterone? How do you compare this to women? Well, that's a different subject. Uh, I think it's got quite a lot going for it for women uh, as an adjunct to their form of HRT, hormone replacement therapy, with estrogens. Um, but that's a different area that I'm not really qualified to speak in, but uh, I very much support because I think women can feel not only sexier, but also uh, can <clears throat> feel mentally much more active when they're on testosterone. But that's uh, a different case and yet to be proved, whereas the case for treating more men with testosterone, I think is well proven. The traditional medical community, um, whether it's homeopathic or alternative medicine, uh, routinely dismisses that, maybe less now than they used to, and we're getting an integration of the two. What, what is the, have you been able to ascertain the medical community's response to what you write about in this book? Well, <clears throat> that's why on the cover I've got a picture of a, an angry doctor lean, leaning over a desk uh, saying what has been said to the majority of the 3,000 patients I've uh, seen over the last 30 years uh, when patients ask for testosterone treatment, they're told no, they can't have it. Uh, so uh, we're trying to change uh, that and this new theory of resistance to testosterone is really a game changer. We only have a minute or two left here. Is there something you'd like to add that we have not covered during this interview, Doctor? Yes, I think to emphasize the safety of testosterone treatment, that the big myths of um, uh, that it will cause prostate cancer or cause heart trouble are just that myths, as has been largely shown by the uh, doctor who wrote the foreword to the book, Abe Morgenthaler of um, uh, Boston University, has abolished both of these myths. So it's a very safe form of treatment. It could be a lot cheaper than it is. The prices are cranked up by the drug companies, I think. Um, but it's a very safe and effective form of treatment and a good form of preventive medicine of the future. I, I know the answer is never enough in any field, but is there enough money being spent on the research to alleviate the problems associated with, lack, with low testosterone? Well, yes, there is, actually. Um, it's not more research we need. It's more application, more treatment with testosterone, and it will prove itself. All right. The name of the book, Testosterone Resistance, Dr. Malcolm Carruthers. Uh, it's available through X Libris. Sir, by on a closing note here, did you receive your education in the UK? Yes, I did entirely, but uh, I've traveled widely in the US as well as uh, Australia, and I've learned a lot from doctors all over. All right. Thank you very much for joining us uh, through London. And um, in our case, uh, uh, good morning to us, but a good afternoon to you. It has been an absolute pleasure.
All right, Dr. Malcolm Carruthers, testosterone resistance. We'll change topics as we frequently do here on Stu Taylor on Business when we come back. Okay. Good to talk to you, Stu.